So today we're going to go over the setup of the S320 base and rubber system with the uh, Hemisphere XF2 data collector. So we have two antennas, one is your base, one is your rover. These are interchangeable in your setup. Either one can be the base, either one can be the rover. Um, it's just going to dictate how you set it up in the software. In this case I have them labeled, this one's the base, this one is the rover. So the first thing you need to do is put the batteries into the antennas. They have two battery slots, um, so it's a hot swappable system. If one battery dies, you, it'll switch over to this one, and then you can swap out the one that's dead. Okay, so when you put the battery inside of its holder, there's a little notch in the holder, same notch in the battery. You slide it right in, and make sure your two contacts are exposed, so that way they slide into the center of the antenna. And then uh, if you look deep inside, there's uh, another track that the battery kind of slips into. So just push it in, and you're good to go. So before you power on the antenna, if you want to plug in its radio antenna, so there's a little port right here down at the bottom. Your antenna just threads in. It's a TNC connection. And once it's nice and snug, just press the power button, it'll beep, and go through a light sequence. Okay, so we're not going to get the proper lights because we're inside, but these first two lights will show green as long as your batteries are good. Uh, it's one green light per battery. If the right battery was to die, this light would turn red, but this light would still be green. Um, this light right here shows that you have differential corrections coming in. This light shows that you have uh, just satellite communications, so raw GPS. And this is your radio link light. So if I was to have both the base and rover on and set up the communication between the two, this light would be flashing. And this is the raw data logging light. So if you wanted to log your raw base data to post-process a control point later, um, the site would be on showing that you are doing that. And then to turn off the antenna, you hold the power button down until it beeps three times, and then the battery light starts flashing and you can let go. Okay, so now with the antenna outside, it's still showing we're using the right battery, uh, and then just has uh, basic GPS corrections right now, uh, it's really no corrections. Then once I connect to the antenna, the blue light starts flashing, just letting you know you're trying to make a connection. And I'll just do a quick connect. Um, it's connected, now the blue light is flashing rapidly. And now periodically, so it's outputting two positions a second. The light should reflect that. And hopefully the differential corrections pop in. But it might take a while. There it goes. Now the uh, second green light has popped in for the SPAS corrections. So right now it's just letting us know that we have differential. And it's good. Right now the radio light is red. 
which says that it's looking for a base signal, but it hasn't picked up. So right now you're in RTK float. And then as soon as the radio light pops over to green, it means you're RTK fixed. And it has an active communication from the rover to the base. So once your antennas are set up and turned on outside or in the field, then it is time to configure the Serve CE software to communicate both to your GPS system and the sonar mic echo sounder. Start. Right, so once you have both the base and rover turned on, you'll want to go in and configure Serve CE. And it can be found by hitting the start menu there or on the data logger. So when it first opens up, if you're going to be working in a new area, you'll want to start a new job. And I'll name this test 2. And you hit the green arrow, it's going to create your job. Then you come in here and you set the projection and units of measure that you want to use. So you have different options, you can use US survey feet for now. And to change your projection, you go to Edit Projection List, Add Predefined, and it'll bring up a menu. So you have the different countries, and then the different projections contained within there. Since we are in California, I'll use California Zone 2. Hit the green check, then make sure it's selected here. Green check again, and so now that's set up. Green check one last time. And it's going to ask you if you want to connect to a previous device. I'm going to say no. And I'm going to go to the equipment tab and start the base. So here you want to make sure you select hemisphere for the manufacturer. The S320 is the model. And you work in your menus from left to right in the tabs. So we're going to use Bluetooth for communication. You can use the internal Windows Mobile. And this is the serial number of the rover, no, I'm sorry, of the base. You move to the receiver tab. So here's where you set your antenna height, any kind of elevation mask that you want to use. You go into advanced, you want to make sure you're using GLONASS. And then you go to the RTK tab. So here's where you select the radio. In this case, the antenna has an internal 400 megahertz radio. You hit the wrench and hammer you can configure the frequency as well as the power output so once those settings are good you hit the green check and it's going to ask you for the control point you can either read observations from the base and take an average you can enter in a known latitude longitude or you can enter in a known control point in your projection coordinates if you have a previous base file that you've saved, you can enter it from a, you can load it from that file. So in this case, for now, I'm just going to take 10 observations. Uh, you can burn in a point and do it based on time. Okay, and I'm going to set my base ID to 10. Epson tells you, yeah, okay, this point looks good. And now you, I can save the configuration so I can just load this file later on and not have to burn in a new point. So now the base is set up, so we'll set up the rover. And the setup for the rover is going to be very similar. Hemisphere GNSS, the model's the S320. Again, work from left to right. The only thing that's going to be different is the device. The rover is set for the uh, serial number of 667. Again, go to receiver, set your antenna height, any masking that you want to use. Uh, the output, I'm, I set it 2 hertz. And go to the RTK tab again, the internal radio. Now here for the base ID, this is set to 10, so the rover will only communicate with a base ID of 10, which is what we set the base to. So that's okay, you hit the green check mark. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the rover to communicate with the base over radio. 
and to check and make sure that you have a fixed position let's go to monitor sky plot oh, I have the uh, echo sounder enabled right now that's why it's saying no depth I'm going to disable that real quick so it's only GPS right now so it doesn't have a fix on the base might take it a little while to pop in while we're waiting for that uh, you can also set tolerances if you have certain accuracies that you want to meet you can configure them in here and if you if you need to change your projection after creating your job you go to file and job settings and then system and you can change your projection Click on this. Alright, so now with the base and rover configured, you're in the monitor sky plot. You should see a uh, status as fixed RTK. We're in float right now. Our satellite constellation is really bad, close to a building. So once your GPS says fixed, then you go into peripherals to enable the sonar my echo sounder. So you go to the depth sounder tab, check it as active. The model will be the Sonarmite. You want to use a min quality of zero so you won't filter out any data and show depth when Z is available. Go into the COM setup. And just like with the GPS system, if you're using Bluetooth, your type is the internal Windows Mobile, and the device is the SMIL050615, which is the serial number of the Sonarmite. So hit the green check, green check again. So now it's configured to use the echo sounder as well as communicate to the rover which is getting corrections from the base so once you're ready to start logging your data go to survey auto by interval and we're gonna log based on time and I have it set to 0.5 seconds the sonarmite outputs two depths every second and the rover was set to output two positions every second so it should line up nicely you can enter in your starting point ID and a description if you want you can also set a max uh, number of points to record as soon as you hit the green check, it's going to start logging data to the file. So the the beeping is the um, the data logger taking points to have your northing, easting, as well as the depth. Uh, we're in a test tank right now, so the depth is kind of bouncing everywhere, and we're still in float. So once it pops into fix, you'll get a usable depth and you, it pops in and out right there that's the depth in feet and to pause recording you hit the red square and to start up again you hit the green arrow and once you've recorded your data for the day you hit the red X and you go into file import export You're going to export an ASCII file um, here you can you can use a user to find and uh, for the coordinate order uh, just whatever you need to use in this case we're going to do point ID, northing, easting, elevation and description uh, we're going to use a comma to delimit the different columns of data you can use something else if you need to and once that's set, you hit the green check mark. And it's going to ask you to name your output file. It's going to be test2. It's a text file. And then you can import that text file into AutoCAD or whatever else you use to draw your contours or make your surface. And then when you're done in Serve CE, under the file, you go to exit. Yes. And then to turn off the data logger, you hold down the power button until this menu pops up, and you hit yes. And then the data logger shuts off.
and then the antenna will beep three times and the red battery light will start flashing. And you let go of the power button and the antenna is off.